So, RimWorld was banned in Australia. You can still play it, it's just that people can't buy it anymore. But it's such a cute game with cartoon graphics, how bad could it possibly be? And why did it take them 9 years? So I launched RimWorld, I asked Randy to give me a good story, and off I went. Meet the colonists. Alexis Lex Shura, a child spy turned human computer, a night owl, jogger, and pretty, and utterly incapable of artistic work. Rain Lorne, a cave world tunneler turned ranger, dumb as a rock but very skilled. He is also a misogynist, and he's stuck on this planet with two women, so I'm sure that'll go great. And Avalon Ava Marie, a child spy turned taxonomist, whose past left her incapable of violence. It didn't leave her incapable of cannibalism, but this shouldn't be a problem. They landed on this random planet, and right off the bat they put together some shelter. They slept on the floor, but at least they had a bit of roof over their heads for the first night. The next day I started a ritual, allowing Ava to take up a role in their ideology. A role called the Laugher of Violence, which by the way sounds lovely. After a long time, the ritual was finished, and the cannibal became the colonist's spiritual leader. Now, this might be a good moment to talk about the ideology, the set of beliefs that dictate the laws of the colony. These people follow the Archonic Doctrine, believing they should dominate others, that each person is a part of the greater whole, that being high is the key to a good life. Oh, and they're all cannibals. After a while, the colonists demanded names for their faction and for their base. I didn't like the names the game suggested, so I named their faction the Meat Industry, and their base would be known as Meat Factory 1. I think Randy really liked those names, because a few minutes later, a wanderer walked into the map. A wild man who had forsaken society and walked around buck naked. Meet Trev. As a child, Trev was a farmhand, and as an adult he became a space trafficker? To be honest, the most noteworthy thing about him was his creepy breathing, which would make everybody hate him. So I sent Lex and Rand to welcome him to the colony, and to escort him straight to his bedroom, in prison. I expected trouble and gave those two guns, but Trav didn't put up a fight, and Lex just brought him to the base, the last home he'd ever need. Remember, these people are supremacists. So, once it properly in prison, Lex just executed the prisoner. And since these people are also cannibals, Ren took his body to a butchering station and walked away with 119 human meat and 64 human leather. That was enough for 11 meals and just like that, Meat Factory 1 was in business. In the meantime, I had Ava plant some things out back behind the base, but that's a surprise for later. Don't worry, as long as strangers and raiders keep coming, they won't need to grow any food. Now, this colony does have a fourth member I neglected to mention, Firebug. Firebug is a tamed timber wolf and Ava's personal pet. So since there was all the human leather just sitting around in storage, I decided to put it to good use and made Firebug a nice human leather animal bed. I think he liked it. Later on, with power all wired up, the colony now had a freezer and an electric stove, so they'd be able to cook and freeze as much food as possible. Straight out of left field, Rand told a story about wearing neckties, and somehow Lex found that irresistible and the two became lovers. The thing is, Rand is already married, it's just that his wife didn't crash land here. In any case, the Archonic Doctrine forbids sharing beds outside of marriage, and his wife isn't around, so this shouldn't cause any trouble. Now, the colony had only had a single visitor so far, and food soon ran out. Luckily enough, some cargo pods had delivered berries a few days earlier, and when the colony ran out of meals, instead of starving, they settled for these disgusting vegetarian dishes. At this point, people's mood started getting worse, so I decided to give them floors to make the place look nicer. 
the colonists said goodbye to the earth and gravel beneath their feet and slowly built some nice new flammable wooden floors. Yes, flammable. Was there a forest fire nearby? Maybe. Could it burn down this entire wooden base? Probably. Did I do anything about it? No. I waited patiently for the problem to solve itself. And a while later, a storm rolled around and extinguished the flames. So everything worked out great. Except for the food situation. That one continued to deteriorate, so I ended up butchering one of the donkeys. The vegetarian dishes were out, but meat was back in the menu for a while. Nothing happened for the next few days except for a battery fire, and soon some of the crops were ready for harvest. The first crop was called smoke leaf, and now it was time to unveil the main product of the colony. You see, did this colony believe in cannibalism? Yes, but it also believed in being high. Ava got straight to work, took some smoke lift to the drug lab and made some joints. I don't know why you'd need a whole lab for it, but okay. Ava tested the product herself and it was great. It reduced pain in exchange for reduced consciousness in moving and some increased hunger. But the work wasn't finished yet. Because, you see, Ava had also planted the psychoid leaves out in the back, and psychoid leaves could be turned into Yayo, Yayo, and Yayo would fetch a much higher price with the neighboring factions. Ava got back to work, and with the few leaves available, she created a single unit of Yayo, and immediately snorted it. This one reduced pain by half, and increased movement, and reduced tiredness. If this resembles something from real life, I'm sure it's purely a coincidence. Now, this may sound nice, but pawns can build tolerances to this stuff, so effects will be diminished over time. Not only that, they can get addicted, and then you're gonna need to feed them drugs forever, or deal with a pissed off colonists for a very, very long time as they deal with their addiction. With this in mind, I'll keep them away from the Yayo, and we're only gonna use it for trade. The smoke leaf, however, is so easy to make, it stays legalized, so the colonists can just smoke whenever. So, how far has this colony come? We can all agree that so far, Meat Factory has been the site of murder, cannibalism, cheating, and drugs. And you know what? Things are only gonna get worse from here. Now. This is still a cute game with cartoon graphics, and I think banning this game is stupid. But since I'm not Australian, it's not my problem. But if you, unlike Australia, want to see more RimWorld, consider hitting the like button and let's see how bad things are going to get the next time.